What is Asetech? Well, they make all-in-one coolers for darn near everybody. They own the patents. If you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I've been kind of obsessed on and off with smaller form factor builds. These typically, I mean, people look at them, but people don't really buy them, at least judging from our Amazon and affiliate links and some of the forum posts. They really do make good home theater machines, uh, machines attached to a television that have a lot more horsepower than a Chromecast. But when you want a PC in your living room, you also want a machine that's quiet. And a lot of these small form factor machines make compromises in terms of their sound dampening ability. Uh, I did a, a roundup recently that featured a lot of these small form factor cases. I, for some reason I left out the Fractal ERA. You know, this comes with a wood grain panel that, that should have been in, in the roundup. And I think it was really just down to heat dissipation because you can have a mesh top with this. You can also have a wood grain top. I like the wood grain top. Even if you use the wood grain top, you still get a little bit of ventilation around the edges. It's not quite as good as the, uh, the mesh. But what if I told you there's a dual radiator in this thing and I've still got enough room for an ITX system. Barely, check it out. Okay, so I don't have a motherboard in there yet, but it was just so I could do this, this. So I was lamenting to uh, some contacts that I have at Asetech that there's not really anything exciting going on for small form factor machines. I mean, we've got CPUs like the Intel 10600K, which is a little blast furnace. Uh, even the new XT CPUs from AMD will run better if you can keep them cooler. So the ERA, I've got my deep cool, you know, 240 millimeter radiator in the top. And I can make that work in this case, but it is not fun to build in. Cramming the power supply in there, it's gotta be an SFX power supply because, I mean, you could put a full ATX power supply in here, but again, it is not fun to build. It's not, it's not fun to build, it's not fun to work on. I mean, it's cool that it's a tiny case, but it's just, it's just not, not a lot of fun from the builder's perspective. The Dancase A4, even though it's smaller, just because of its layout, it's actually easier to work on than a case like the ERA. And also the Sliger, you know, the Sliger lunchbox computer that I'm always on about. I think it's working on this is also easier just because of the layout and the internal case design and the way that they've put it together. Of course, with the ERA, this is the only one that's gonna do PCI Express 4 correctly because it doesn't require a riser or a ribbon cable or anything like that. But you do have a little bit less room for your GPU than either one of these cases, especially the Sliger, which this lunchbox version is the triple slot version. So it's always a game of give and take or trade-offs or, or whatever. So I was super excited to get this 92 millimeter AIO and look at that, it's a thick, it's a thick rad. And they've even engineered the elbows such that you can use the Noctua 14 millimeter low profile. Look at that, you've got enough room it doesn't rub or anything, that's perfect. So with two of these in a push-pull configuration, the performance of this radiator is about equivalent to 120 millimeter Ace Attack, which is a little, I mean, the radiator on the 120 millimeter is a little thinner. So what you don't have in XY dimension, you make up for in Z dimension, in, in thickness, and it's able to dissipate a little bit more heat. That said, the rear fan here on the ERA on the Fractal, it's not 92 millimeters. You, depending on the motherboard, you do have 92 millimeters of clearance, but you'll have to 3D print an adapter. Fortunately, on Thingiverse, there is actually a 3D printable adapter. But I thought dual radiators in this case, what on earth could I put in here that would require dual radiators? Maybe I could run the GPU off of one and the CPU off of the other, like an i5 with you know some kind of ridiculous custom liquid cooling GPU type setup. Well, Asetech does actually have an adapter for this cooler that you could use with your GPU, that is an option. I also wanted to show you this. This is, a, this is a, this is, you know, an odd situation. It's like, wait, why would I want this? Why would I want four slots for my GPU with two blowers? Aren't blowers terrible? No, blowers are in fact better when you've got a lot of GPUs, if you're doing machine learning or something like that, because it's going to exhaust air to the outside of the case. You know, we see that on the new RTX 3000 series design, one of the fans forces air through the, through the back of the card and the other one forces air out the back of the computer. If the GPU has the opportunity to get air to, 
outside the computer, it should do that because it's going to be better overall for the rest of the computer. I mean, I think that the RTX series has shoot connectors. You've got three DisplayPort and one HDMI. Look how many more connectors you've got on this thing. I've got, oh, three DisplayPort and one HDMI. Well, never mind then. Now on most of the other RTX cards, you had USB-C, you had you know three DisplayPort and an HDMI. Some of them have two HDMI. This can actually still make sense even for other builds because like in the Fractal case where you've got some vertical slots, you can set it up like this where your GPU is directly into the motherboard and then your cooler is just setting over on the side. Then you don't need a ribbon cable or a riser cable or anything. And it keeps all of your other slots free for whatever else that you might be running. It's pretty interesting when you consider that you could just pop this off and pop a different Asetek cooler on it other than you know, this slot cooler, or you could mix and match or, or do something else. The other reason that you might want something like this is you have an OEM system. Think like a Dell workstation where it literally doesn't have a spot for any kind of a radiator, uh, or it's a pain in the butt to try to make one to try to mount one on a 120 millimeter fan. If you've got free expansion slots, you can use something like this, and this is gonna have better cooling for workstation or workstation-ish or, or light duty than anything else. So all right, full disclosure, in testing this, this is much better than say a blower only, like you can get an RTX 2080 OEM that's just a single blower motor. And this is better than that, but this is not better than an axial cooler as long as it's the only GPU in the system. So like if you've got the Founders Edition version of the RTX 2080, it's actually gonna run a little cooler as long as the rest of the cooling in your system is good. If the rest of the cooling in your system is not good, then this will be better. So with this setup with dual blower motors, you're moving just as much air, but it doesn't have to be quite as loud. And most people don't realize just how prevalent Asetek is in the market. I mean, this connection here, this circular connection, you've seen this on Corsair, you've seen this on tons and tons of other uh, designs, other implementations of all-in-one coolers. Now everybody's got special sauce, everybody likes to you know do their special tweaks and do their testing and qualification and things like that, but most of them start with a base Asetek design. Even Threadripper, you know, Threadripper includes the bundled adapter. It's designed for Asetek based coolers, which covers a huge number of brands. That's not to say that the work that you know Corsair and other partners of Asetek are doing you know, they're just putting their sticker on it. That's not really true at all. They actually do a lot of work for qualification and testing and that kind of thing. And there are some products like this 92 millimeter radiator, which doesn't get quite as much attention from the OEMs because this is really only important for small form factor builds. But you see, it's, it's really hard to dot the I's and cross the T's because as cool as this is, I can't use it out of the box with any of these cases, none, not a one of them because they're not really set up for a 92 millimeter cooler. It's sort of a question of which came first, the chicken or the egg. The one that you could have the most luck with is probably gonna be the Fractal ERA, but you still need to print an adapter so that you can mount it to the back. And you're gonna have to make sure that you clear all the stuff on the motherboard because it is gonna stick down a little bit and it's gonna be touching the side of the case. So that might be another one of those things. If there's enough interest in that, I'll uh, share the, the 3D model for that. This is gonna show up on another build a little bit later, but I wanted to give you a preview and say nice things about Asetek because most people don't realize, it's like, what is Asetek? And it's like, well, they make AIOs. And so, you know, the last place that you might've heard of Asetek is with patents. They see, they've got a number of patents that make it hard for other people to produce their own AIOs. Uh, but we see a lot of innovation in the market now because of those patents. So there are people that are trying to build AIOs that don't run afoul of Asetek's patents. And because of that, we're seeing a lot of innovation because the performance delta from an all-in-one liquid cooler and a custom loop liquid cooler is still a very, very large delta. And we even see companies that are uh, producing their own cooler like Intermax for Threadripper, which out of the box, that is an incredible cooler. It's just that they're defective a lot of the time. Like, you know, I'm on my third or fourth replacement for an Intermax Threadripper cooler. And at this point, I, I can only just preemptively recommend that you get it and you replace the coolant with a better coolant because after a while, if you don't replace the coolant or you don't keep an eye on it, it's gonna corrode, the performance is gonna tank. It'll last a year or two in continuous use. If you're doing something like folding at home, you might get a year out of it, maybe. And so they're doing special things, but then it's like, this is really innovative, but it's definitely, they've stumbled a bit because they've had to innovate. Whereas, you know, Asetek has been doing this for everybody in volume. And so you can imagine how much they've learned from that and how reliable it is and that kind of thing. So 
the AIO space is heating up, not just because of Asetech, but because of all of the competition entering the market and, and that kind of thing. And so I think one of the ways that Asetech is stepping up is saying, okay, we're gonna bring you next generation products. And we're gonna bring you things like a 92 millimeter AIO that performs like a 120 millimeter AIO, at least in my testing. And uh, we're gonna, you know, show you that we're, we're ahead of everybody else, I guess, maybe. Time will tell. But for me, I'm doing some builds. So that's a quick look at Asetech and where you might use it. And uh, I think AIOs and small form factor builds, again, that's a place that has got a lot of room for innovation. And thanks Asetech for sending me this stuff to take a look at when I was like, why don't you guys have anything for small form factor stuff? I need to cool a blast furnace that's So I reached out to uh, one of my contacts at Asetech because I was doing small form factor builds like this. And you know, we got CPUs like the Intel, the i5 10600K, like I understand the 10, the 10900 is, uh, you know, it runs hotter than the surface of the sun. That's fine. I can't, you know, ex necessarily expect to cool that in a small form factor machine. But what about the i5 10600K? It's only six cores. Surely, surely there's something in that. And then he said, yeah, don't call me Shirley, but I've got some stuff we can send over that you can take a look at that might matter for creative cooling solutions. And so they sent uh, th this GeForce RTX 2080 uh, mounting kit thing, which is, you know, this is just a reference PCB here. And this is like a dual blower motor thing. And they also sent this 92 millimeter AIO and some adapters and brackets and stuff like that that will let me use other stuff with this standard connection. So like the standard connection, the circular connection is the same for GPUs. You may have seen some of the, like the NZXT, you know, GPU adapter bracket thing, or you could take a standard Asetech cooler and mount it on your, on your GPU. This is dual blower motors for your GPU. So it gives you a lot more flexibility than you other, you would otherwise have. I mean, obviously this is not meant at a small form factor machine. This is really meant for OEM machines, which don't have a place to mount a radiator because this will have much better cooling in an OEM machine than even uh, you know a dual axial cooler, like a Founders Edition RTX 2080. You know, if you put it in an open air test bench, that dual fan cooler is gonna cool better than a blower style cooler. But if you've got multiple GPUs, you got a machine learning thing and stuff like that, or you've got a, you know, like a Dell Alienware workstation, this is a better setup than a dual axial uh, GPU, which is why a lot of you know, a lot of the time the OEM and the reference versions of cards will still use a blower style motor because it actually is better when the rest of the case is engineered for airflow. If you solve the problem by just throwing tons of fans at it, which is what enthusiasts do, it's a different, you know, different market, different segment, things, things are kind of interesting there. But 92 millimeters, dual 14 millimeter Noctua fans. This little thing is awesome for a small form factor build, but I got to jump through hoops to use it. So again, thanks Asetech for uh, humoring me and letting me do some experiments with your bleeding edge stuff and, and showing me some stuff so I could uh, mess around with things. Thanks, Noctua. And uh, yeah, I'm Wendell, this is level one. I'm signing out and I'll see you later. Sorry for the ramble, I just, I don't know, just sharing my thoughts. <laughs>